I'm playing against one of the mods of the Chess Base India channel, Varhat Atalye. His actual name on the channel is Being Brilliant at Chess. He's rated 1437 and he opens the game with 1 e4. I settle down. I want to play maybe the Karo Khan or e4, e5, but decide to go d6. Knight to f6 on the board, knight c3, and I play e5. This is known as the Philidor. And it is a very solid opening. And he takes, takes, and we go into a queenless middle game already. I really like to play this with the black pieces because I think that I can outplay players in the end games. All those who like playing end games, this is quite a nice way to play. And that's many that's the reason that many of the players do not take here on e5, rather, they go knight to f3. But Warhad playing very aggressively, he's pinned my knight, he wants to go knight d5 check in the position, so I play c6, maybe not the best move here, he goes long castle now, his threat is bishop takes f7, king f7 and rook takes d6. So initially, black does face some problems here, but if he manages to develop all his pieces, he should be fine. Bishop e6 played, and now guys, look at this move, knight h4. If black takes on c4 then knight f5 check and he wins this bishop so it's a very nice and interesting move that he could have tried also possible is this exchange sacrifice takes takes check and knight takes e5 when white has compensation so here white having the lead in development has to do something instantly Varad takes his time but plays bishop b3 this is not in the spirit of the position because now, slowly and steadily, black can complete his development. Knight bd7 played here. You can see me making my moves very coolly and calmly. But I think next time I should speed up. Because in the end, when time pressure sets in, this is very dangerous. There's no increment on the clock. 5 minutes plus no increment here. So, h6 played. Now, the rook on e1 does look nice in the center. But it's actually doing nothing. Black slowly starts to take over now. Bishop h4 played here. And these are the kinds of positions that I have played before. And uh, here what Black does is that he plays g5. Sometimes he even starts expanding on the queen side. His rooks are very flexibly posted. This rook can swing over and both the rooks can play on the king side. Or even this rook can swing over and both the rooks can play on the queen side. g5 played in the position. This is... A pretty good move here bishop g3 the bishop drops back there is pressure on e5 but it's well defended and knight h5 so slowly and steadily black starts to turn on the pressure and turn on the heat i don't want to take the bishop instantly but i'm keeping an eye on it i also want to park my knight on f4 if i get the bishop pair in this position it should be pretty good also, time-wise, I'm doing pretty well. 3 minutes 35 seconds against 3 minutes 19 seconds. He goes rook d2. This is a good move by Warhad. He wants to double. So, let's say even if I play knight takes g3 here, a very interesting idea could be to double already in this position. because Or maybe to take, take and then double here already hitting here and here so i needed to be careful here after rook d2 and i started to think a lot in this position maybe a good idea could have been to take bishop b3 and let's say after a b here now drop my bishop back to c7 and uh, after let's say rook h d1 then i can bring my other rook to d8 there were many many ways to play in this position but taking so much time is a little bit worrisome and i want to play my a rook as you can see my hand moves towards a rook but i'm not sure maybe this rook because i want to use this rook later to push the pawn so these are small decisions which take a lot of time in a classical game but in a blitz game you just have to play on your feel you can't take so much time here Already now lagging close to a minute on the clock behind my opponent. I bring my h rook to d8, which is a fine move, apart from the fact that I took nearly a minute to play it. So rook h d8. Now Warhad has to decide how to continue in this position. It's thinking. 
doubling down the d file looks very natural and good he plays it he plays his rook to d1 now my bishop is attacked so one way could be to maybe take on b3 here that is a possibility the other one is simply to drop the bishop back to c7 the reason why i need to keep my bishop on this diagonal is because the e5 pawn is hanging that's the reason why i can't play bishop b4 in the position so bishop c7 played the time is going to be a big factor here but position wise black is doing pretty well you might ask that what is it exactly that are black's advantages here well the main advantage i would say is this bishop is very poorly positioned and i have good space on the king side they are not weakened weakened pawns there they are pretty good also the knight on c3 is kind of dominated by the pawn on c6 h4 played out of kind of desperation here it's not a good move because now the bishop on g3 is undefended to some extent i took on g3 <clears throat> fg3 and it's time to push the knight away from f3 now these are the moves that need to be made quickly let's go g4 that's a good move now black has close to a decisive advantage in this position he is clearly better the e4 pawn is weak the knights really don't have good squares varhad goes back to h2 and his idea is that uh, he wants to take on e6 and then take on g4 so i play h5 he goes knight f1 he wants to play knight e3 so i bring my bishop to b6 stopping that idea rook e2 you can see that varhad managing his time excellently he knows that the only way he can fight in this game is if he stays ahead on the clock because position wise black is excellent knight c5 another good move here keeping an eye on the e4 pawn also threatening to take here now the best idea would have been to take on e6 but he goes knight to e3 so take on b3 a b3 now have two bishops in this position so this is really a very nice position for black but to break through in less than a minute is not so easy the time is going to be the crucial factor now rook takes d1 what does varhad play he can take it with the king with the two knights he takes it with knight c d1 a check not a check just bringing my rook to the center and now where does varhad play his knights don't have really good squares in the center he goes rook d2 and now a very powerful move would have been rook d4 but instead i take on d2 king d2 rook d4 would have actually given me the e4 pawn bishop d4 now i see the clock and i see there are only 38 seconds how do you sort of clarify the situation and two knights are very tricky when you are low on time and i've already burned five more seconds there bishop d7 king e2 played bishop d7 of course was pretty pointless move I think he goes knight to c4 but now b5 start expanding on the queen side varhad has 1 minute 2 seconds 27 seconds for me the knight comes back to e3 bishop b6 played b4 was necessary for white but he goes here a5 knight f5 check and this is a losing end game because now you can see my king enters the knight has no scope in fact the pawn end game should be also winning but e4 is nice making way for my king to come to e5 varhad although is ahead on time positionally is completely lost king e5 now i want to take on e3 and take on f5 and there you can see him shaking his head 16 seconds should be enough to win this king f2 played takes the knight king takes i don't want to allow king d4 so i play c5 now king f5 is hanging later i can bring the king and push my pawn to f5 varhad tries his last option in the position what is he going to do is he going to resign here no he plays b4 a takes b4 c takes b4 c4 is winning but i take on b4 and b3 nice move by him king takes f5 played king d4 and now push push what has happened oh my god f5 king e3 
and here I blunder king f6, the main blunder of the game, king f4, his king enters and before I even know it, I have lost on time, Varhad manages to beat me and what a finish that was. Just understanding this end game, after bishop e3, king e3, king f5 was winning but okay c5 is a good move, b4 now takes takes and c4 would have given a very solid win for black because the moment white king goes back you don't even have to take this pawn you can just enter via king d4 um, but i took here which is still winning and after b3 now king f5 good move and after king d4 here it was important to find the move king e6 of course i had very little time left but takes and i push my pawn to f5 king d4 king d6 and it's winning because the king has to move back wherever he goes i will take the opposition and eventually win the game king e5 king d3 and f4 black is winning here but e3 was a bad move because after king e3 the it's a draw now and here f5 here came the losing move king f6 any other move is fine, even if I play king e6, king f4, king f6, this is a draw, this is actually winning, so he shouldn't come there, he should play maybe uh, king e2 now, and if I go king e5, he can play king e3, if I go king d5, he can uh, create opposition with king d3, so in that way, the position is around equal, um, is equal, sorry, not around, king f6, king f4 was mis mistake, and now white wins uh, there was a very interesting moment here uh, when after b3 if i had made a mistake of playing king d5 then white can actually draw with king f4 and after king d4 this is a very pretty stalemate on the middle of the board uh, this was uh, quite a painful defeat it also shows me that i should manage my time better maybe get inspired by vishy anand but a few things to note here is that after e4, d6, d4, knight f6, if you like playing the end games, go for this. And this is kind of a relatively harmless way for white to play. I would say white players who are more inclined to middle game do like to play knight f3 in this position. But after takes, takes, uh, this is where I should have played knight bd7. But once I went c6, I think white had an initiative here after knight h4 or rook takes d6 but once i did this um at six black had already taken over and such positions are great fun for black to play because his king is well placed his pawns are nicely positioned he can expand on both wings and uh, maybe this is something that you can think about playing from the black side